person with a mental illness is also a father or a, a son or a daughter or a worker or a friend and all of these other things. People with mental illnesses can have a life, they can have friends, they can do things, they can have dreams, they can work on achieving them in various ways and according to the personalities and, and the, you know, the strengths and, as well as the challenges of the person. That leads to the idea that uh, mental health care should be oriented around the idea of recovery. Citizenship comes along and um, adds to that, that that recovery takes place in the context of one's whole life. That recovery is, is not just a being in recovery, it's, it's, a, it's a recovery that takes place and not just in clinical care. It's recovery that takes place in relation to others and it takes place in relation to society as a whole. That takes place in the context of gaining one's citizenship in society. With citizenship, we came up with a definition that we call the five R's and belonging. So we say that citizenship is a person's or people's a strong connection to the five R's of rights, responsibilities, roles, resources, and relationships that society offers its members, and a sense of belonging that is validated by others. You could have three groupings coming out of the five R's. So rights and responsibilities, we tend to think of as the individual in relation to the society as a whole. You agree to be a citizen, a member of the society, and to have certain rights. And in exchange for that, you have certain responsibilities to obey the law, to pay your taxes, to serve in times of uh, military conscription, and um, beyond that, maybe to be a good neighbor and so forth. The most important and interesting in, uh, interpretation of any of the, the, the five R's uh, that I've heard, um, it was graduate of the Citizens Project, uh, and it was interviewing him about the, about the five R's, and how did he see the five R's, and how, how was it talked about in the classes, and what did they mean to him, and he said, I have the right to have responsibilities. And that just blew me away. If you think about it, so I have the right to be a parent, for example. I have the right to, to be a worker, uh, to have those responsibilities. If you think about your rights, most of the rights that, are, that we have that are meaningful are associated with some kind of responsibility. If we have the right to vote, then we're thinking about, well, we're, we're part of this country or we're part of this town, if we're, you know, if it's town elections. I have a right to um, walk down the street you know, because, uh, because I do and, and I live here. But that implies that I have some kind of relationship with others, and which then implies maybe some kind of responsibility to at least be a halfway friendly neighbor, for example, or say hello uh, to someone I'm passing. So most of the rights that we have are connected in one way or another with responsibilities or the shirking of responsibilities. So rights and responsibilities is one, and then roles and relationships a little different. That begins to get more into the area of what's it like to be living in a community? You have a role in your community. What's your community? Well, it has to do with your job. It might have to do with your family. You're a parent, that's one role. You're a worker, that's another role. You belong to the parent-teacher organization or whatever. Um, you vote, you do all of these other things. You have relationships with people. The identity of being a person with mental illness is a kind of role, you could say. That's a role that's, that's ascribed to you, that's given to you. It's not one that, that you would wish for. Uh, so a valued role, a valued community role, uh, is one that says, I can, I can do more than that. The third area, you could say resources, relates to both. We all need resources from money is a big one uh, people want housing, they want jobs, um, they want the things that other people want. Housing is a resource, but then there are responsibilities that come with housing. You know, if your landlord or the property owner comes in and talks about housing, he's going to, you know, be here, she's going to be talking about these are the responsibilities of people who are renting, right? 
And if you don't fulfill those responsibilities, you could lose your housing. But here are some of the rights that you have as a tenant. You know, so there's often quite a bit of overlap. First of all, how do you have a sense of belonging? Well, you're somehow picking that up from people. You could come into a situation and feel that, well, you know, this is, uh, this is a public place. I, I belong here as well as anybody else. And you could sit down and after a few minutes or after 10 minutes, you might get the idea that um, maybe think people think you don't belong. If you're an African-American 20-year-old male in a uh, white area of town come, you know, sitting at the cafe and everyone around you is white. And if you would do that in the first place in a situation like that, you might feel pretty uncomfortable after a while. So the sense of belonging has to be validated by others in various ways. And not just, yeah, okay, you belong, but, but more than that, you're needed. You, you're needed, you have strengths, you have things to give, and uh, we need you. I think we're about to move beyond recovery-oriented care and, and citizenship-oriented care into uh, re recovery care, citizenship care, recovering citizenship care. And if we, if we were serious 50 years ago or 60 years ago, whenever it was, when we started uh, community mental health by saying people uh, deserved a life in the community, then, then we need to be serious about uh, recovering citizenship as well.